Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge to mix a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Lazada Insider, the digital marketing series. And I'm your host, Shaz, Senior Manager from Lazada Group Strategy. Retail landscape has been moving online and accelerated, especially in the past two years. And for brands or sellers to stand out in the crowded online space, great creative and engaging content is one of the ways to help brands and sellers to grow. Today, we have Harin from Ipsos to share his expertise and knowledge on how brands and sellers can excel in the new media landscape. Thank you, Harim, for joining us today. And I am sure the listeners would like to know a bit more about you at, and Ipsos. Could you share a bit more about yourself? Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm Harim. I uh, head the, the Creative Excellence uh, Service Line at Ipsos uh, in Singapore. Um, I've been working with Ipsos for the past uh, close to six years now and have been working on the brand and communications uh, side of things for the last uh, 15 plus years. Uh, very proud uh, to be working with Ipsos. Ipsos is one of the uh, world's leading uh, market research companies. Uh, they've got offices in about 90 countries and employ about more than 20,000 people. Uh, our tagline is Game Changers. Uh, Game Changers uh, is something that sums up our ambition to help uh, more than 5,000 of our clients uh, to move confidently through a rapidly changing world. So Thanks us. for the introduction. Um, just to kick start today's uh, conversation, um, you know, it can be said without a doubt that many changes have happened due to the pandemic in terms of how we shop, how we work, and so on and so forth. And one of it is how consumers consume media and their habit and preference on contents. Um, could you share your thoughts on this? Sure. Uh... So media consumption habits have been uh, very dynamically evolving even pre-pandemic, uh, but especially in the last couple of years, we've seen a huge uh, change that has happened as well, especially because uh, consumers uh, across the globe uh, are adapting to a new way of life. Uh, and this is uh, one that is uh, you know, that includes a lot of restrictions of various degrees. Uh, and therefore, entertainment and technology usage continues to ride, uh, continues to rise uh, some of the uh, interesting trends in the industry. And these include uh, social media consumption uh, that we've seen gone up tremendously. Uh, audio and podcast is booming. Uh, OTT and cable news viewership is also something that has gone up significantly uh, over the last couple of years. Um, what we've also seen, Shaz, in the, in the last two years or so is even within, the, within those two years or so of the pandemic, we've seen some degree of change or some degree of shift that has happened uh, from the topics that have interest people. Uh, so from what started off as, uh, you know, a, a quite a, a scary pandemic situation uh, during the first year or so, entertainment, escapism, these were topics that became more relevant uh, and resonated more with, with, uh, with viewers. Uh, and as things have evolved and as uh, vaccination and all the other uh, scientific developments have kicked in, we've seen a lot of interest on, on uh, topics such as science, business and technology. Uh, what we've seen as a result of all of this is that uh, it is absolutely important for brands to connect with people uh, in an authentic manner. And uh, uh, this can be done by, by making sure that whatever they develop as content is uh, not just socially uh, and economically relevant, but also something that connects with people at a personal level. And with these changes in people's media consumption habits and preference, um, some myths around content creation has been floating around. It would be great if, you know, you could share your expert opinions on this myth so that the brand and sellers that are listening are able to distinguish what are the myths and what are the actual on-the-ground observation. So I think the very first common myth that we always hear is that, you know, to create great creative and engaging content, you would need a huge investment. So what, what do you think about this? Uh, I think this is a great uh, and a classic myth as you've described it as well. So uh, what we've seen over the course of so many years of being in the industry is that media and the weights that one puts behind campaigns 
uh, definitely are a factor in influencing campaign success. Um, but unfortunately, only up to a point. Uh, at Epsos, at least we've seen enough evidence that uh, creative, uh, meaning the quality of the creative that goes on air, can explain up to 75% of the campaign success. In other words, a creative that is strong does not always need heavy investments. Uh, it might sound a little bit bold, but that is indeed true. Um, the discussion, therefore, uh, should be revolving more around how can consumers or how can marketers get to creatives that have a strong uh, success uh, potential. Yeah? Uh, and therefore, at Ipsos, uh, we emphasize on the need to build a culture that revolves around insights-based creativity or content generation, uh, because this would act as a shortcut to getting to creative that is strong and engaging in market. Thus, during any creative uh, development process, we advise our clients uh, to start early and test uh, even as early as the strategy or the execution uh, or the insight uh, behind the execution as well. Uh, and by doing that, you would be able to explore the evocative power of the idea, how uh, it is able to relate and how relevant is it for consumers. And also, uh, more importantly, how is the, is the brand connection uh, sort of made? Uh, and our experience with early stage research shows uh, that we end up saving not only a lot of money, but also precious time and end up coming up with great creatives or great content that drives brand growth. So in a nutshell, uh, media uh, and weights behind a campaign are critical, but uh, we always say creative is king. Cool. I think like another, I guess, um, especially now, um, if you know the increase in uh, media consumption among um, our consumers, um, there's this myth that is going around. You know, uh, the more content you have, the wider you know your reach, and the higher is the effectiveness. So, does this then mean that um, as a brand or as a seller, I would need to constantly produce new content in order to reach and engage with my audience? Uh, great point again, Shaz, and uh, this in fact links very nicely with the point that I was talking about uh, in the previous part as well, which is the, the power of the creatives uh, that goes uh, into the market. Uh, when the creative is powerful, it definitely has more shelf life, more longevity, and is less likely to uh, wear out uh, when compared with creatives that are either average or poor. Uh, Often a lot of companies we've seen uh, you know, fall into the trap of producing, as you said, content uh, time and time again, constantly uh, trying to do that. Uh, but we've, we've seen that it results in a lot of noise, sometimes even wastage. Uh, and in, in few cases, it also uh, can potentially lead to confusion because we've seen uh, across uh, not so, many, so many data points that uh, the attention span that consumers have is going down by the day. So less is more uh, is the is the mantra that we follow um, obviously there will be instances when you need to refresh your brand or talk about a, a new message or a benefit that warrants uh, you know producing new content but that apart uh, if if the creative is powerful it, it definitely has more shelf life uh, and more legs to, to walk uh, the marathon so i guess the common hearing you know quality over quantity definitely holds true here um and i think another thing that you know with these changes um due to pandemic um you know we do see um social media is a way of how consumers actually like keep in touch not only with their family friends um but also with friends so is social media the sweet silver bullet what would you say about this sure um Yes, so uh, as we were discussing upfront as well, the way the, the media consumption habits are changing, social media is definitely uh, becoming more and more uh, accessible, more and more uh, things that people are going to be spending time on. Um, but that said, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean, I and mean, we've in fact even seen a lot of companies you know, wanting to move away from the traditional media over to, to social because that's where you see a lot of people coming in. Um, but but more. Uh, Certainly, we, we see that it is not something that uh, is the be-all and end-all of everything. Uh, we've evaluated and we've tested a lot of multimedia campaigns uh, over the last few years as well, including in the, uh, in the times during the pandemic. Uh, and we've seen two interesting patterns. One is uh, both mass media as well as digital media, both have their own unique benefits. 
you mentioned about uh, reach. So we've still seen that when it comes to traditional media such as TV, uh, it still would be the the channel or the the media that would give you the reach. Digital is where we've seen a lot of uh, clients trying to get engagement, uh, especially because you're able to target consumers in a hyper targeted manner. So that's one. We've seen both having their own uh, sets of benefits. The other important pattern we've seen is that. Uh, the clutter in the in the, the digital landscape is a lot more than what we've seen in the in the traditional landscape. Uh, and as you mentioned, there are many many companies that are wanting to produce content, wanting to go out there every other uh, sort of week or so. Uh, and what we've seen as a result is more and more clutter, re- leading to lower and lower attention spans. Uh, therefore, the opportunity for uh, companies to create branded memories. Uh, tends to be a little bit lower on digital as compared to uh, something like a TV. So the next myth I think that we will, will be talking about is like, you know, um, the creative content is not effective if it does not drive sales. What would you say to this? Um, great point again. So um, at Ipsos, we've got a very clear uh, and a simple philosophy of how we define campaigns or creatives to be successful. Uh, any ad or any campaign obviously needs to needs to be uh, attention grabbing and needs to break through the clutter. But once that's done, uh, we believe there are two things from a uh, from a change uh, or a desire perspective that they would uh, they could influence. One is short term and one is long term. Uh, a lot of creatives, a lot of uh, campaigns that you would see are trying to sell products or sell services or sell something, uh, and therefore. The objective in those cases is obviously trying to measure the short-term sales impact. Uh, But equally, uh, you see a lot of purpose-led communications uh, that a lot of brands are embarking on these days. Uh, You've seen a lot of hashtags, a lot of campaigns, whether it is toxic masculinity, whether it is Black Lives Matter, or even during the pandemic, uh, we had uh, a lot lot of brands that you would not think about, let's say from the food and beverage industry, uh, for instance, that came out and spoke about uh, social distancing, stay at home, uh, you know, more as a more as a purpose because you you know that those are not the times where selling is is what is uh, going to help the brand. In these instances, we've seen that sales may not always be the end goal. In these cases, uh, equity or the long term impact of of what the brand is doing as a purpose. Uh, is what uh, makes them successful and uh, there are obviously you know research techniques to try and understand or measure the impact of both uh, within the same sort of uh, uh, framework uh, and therefore uh, in a nutshell it's not like if you don't end up uh, driving sales in in that short term period means that campaign is not successful you've seen uh, many successful campaigns as defined by you know whether it is cons winning or fe's winning uh, and if you see some of them uh, they touch a chord uh, they don't necessarily go with the intent of only driving sales sales is always a byproduct but not always the end goal for all of these campaigns yeah i think your last statement was a very good um, summary that you know in the end the creative content there might there are multiple purpose, multiple objective. Um, and you know, it does not necessarily like a great content uh, would means that the sales would go up. And I think the very last myth that I think I'm sure uh, you might have uh, heard before is that, you know, um, I need to choose between creativity and data. Like, you know, uh, data constrain um, the creative process. You know, is this true or, you know, what is your thoughts around this? Sure. So uh, again, having worked in this uh, creative research uh, space for you know uh, close to a decade and a half or more, uh, we've often been labeled as people who kill creativity. And uh, and again, it's not uh, it's not trying to uh, to blame anybody or anything, but it's it's obvious that when you're trying to understand uh, data and what makes something, a, a lot of a lot of companies or a lot of research techniques get into the mode of trying to templatize things. At Ipsos, we definitely do not believe in that. Uh, And in fact, uh, we've seen that a lot of successful campaigns, and again, as I mentioned, success as defined by the creative industry. Uh, What is success for them? A Khan's gold, an FE gold, and so on, right? Uh, Many of our viewers would be surprised to know that uh, many of the industry uh, research agencies, including Ipsos, have partnered 
partnered clients and and uh, produced content or rather uh, produced it in a manner that helps them win some of these awards as well um so we definitely don't believe that uh, if you've got creative it will not necessarily do well on research we've in fact seen a lot of campaigns that do well in research and eventually also win the creative award so to speak um so overall we we actually believe that data or research should be used uh, or considered as an enabler rather than a pillar of successful creatives for the next question you know what do you think are some of the biggest opportunities or trends in content creation uh, for 2022 sure uh, i think as far as uh, specific to e-commerce is concerned there are definitely certain big opportunities that we see uh, coming in uh, two or three of these uh, include uh, let's say building a storefront so when it comes to e-commerce sites trying to trying to simulate an experience that uh, that consumers would have uh, in on physical stores trying to simulate the same thing on e-commerce sites either through a mobile or a desktop uh, that is something that we see emerging as another uh, as one trend uh, another trend includes uh, live streaming commerce uh, so tele shopping uh, uh, and within that as well uh, something that we've seen uh, a lot of a lot of e-commerce uh, companies are trying to to get into this space and trying to make the most of the opportunity uh, existing uh, within the space uh, targeted campaigns uh, to promote certain products certain uh, niche brands uh, is also something as a pattern that we see uh, and something that a lot of marketers are likely to uh, take uh, advantage of this year uh when it comes to content specifically or the type of campaigns uh there are those that would drive awareness uh, those uh, others that could drive uh, conversions to sales uh there are also a lot of uh, uh, especially in the e-commerce industry we see a lot of uh, brands trying to complement each other and getting consumers to buy products that are uh, complementary uh, to the primary product that they are uh, looking to purchase um and overall uh, i think the consumer is evolving uh, their media habits as we've seen are changing uh, it's important that uh, uh, brands especially take advantage of this uh, including the likes of social media uh, you know and, and, and e-commerce and try to make the most of how they can they can uh, get their brands to succeed and grow further thank you so much uh, for those tip um right now, i think as a final question like you know um is there any other you know final tips or advice you have uh, for the brands or the sellers that are listening in on how they can leverage uh, on content creation to help their brands or sales grow sure uh, and just from my area of expertise i can think of three or maybe even four things uh, that come to to mind as as final thoughts Uh, on this topic um, so first things first uh, as i said so we at epsos believe uh, in the power of insights to draw or to drive uh, brand growth um, so i would think of the following things as far as uh, sort of final comments or final takeaways uh, are concerned uh, creativity is not killed by data or research in fact it can be used to nurture creativity so we need to uh, we encourage all our clients to build a culture uh, that revolves around uh, insights led creativity so that would be one big takeaway for us uh, the other is uh, in doing so there is absolutely no harm in starting early um, you don't have to wait for an ad to be ready or a campaign to be ready to understand whether it's going to be uh, or likely to be successful in market or not uh, there is enough uh, evidence to suggest that you start earlier in the process uh and you get to the the final stage must fast much faster and also save a lot of time um one other thing uh that also comes to mind is uh when it comes to media strategy uh it is always important to to plan it in a way uh, whether it is traditional or social uh but plan it in a way that, uh, where you can help create strong brand memories because eventually yes while we are here to sell products or services uh brands that that continue or sustain that growth are the ones that are able to create uh, enough uh, long term equity uh, and the last last sort of point is also uh, critical especially in the context of today's changing changing sort of uh, buying behavior purchase behavior working very closely for companies uh, you know, with their retailers or their e-commerce partners uh, so that targeting especially hyper targeting uh, as as a result of knowing their 
uh, past purchase behaviors, etc., would help in further uh, creating an ecosystem where brands can grow even faster. Um, thank you once again, Harin, for sharing your knowledge and expertise on this topic. Um, I have definitely like uh, picked out a few tips and tricks uh, with regards to, you know, content creation um, and creative excellence. So with that, uh, to our listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode. And thank you so much once again for listening. Bye, thank everyone. You, thank you. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks, guys. This is the Zana Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. La Zana.